We need to take government from this constitutional delinquents. Hunger, ending hunger on campuses. Yes. Yeah, yes. tell me about that. So, because the system is against us, mm. as in favor us. It's Ah, but you made this. But you made this sound. Yes, my brother. <laughs> How? <laughs> in terms of political economy, they are driving the, the privatization of the ESCO. Mm. So they want to devalue it through also using the education. Because remember now, professors are going to do research. Mm. They are going to come around. No, the levels of what are high. Mm. Some climate change. Did you win the TP? Yeah, of course, I won. The, the, <laughs> oh, the, the, the right. so, that oh, so the protest at the time was in relation more to the vaccine yes. and not, not to the knowledge around COVID, the pathogen yes, itself. Yes. Mm. They use this body SRS to threaten some of the black entrepreneurs. I don't mm. want to be too, it's not racial, it's mm. a fact. Because it happened with uh, DJ's boo, I think. Because mm. The education that we have mm. doesn't promote thinking. Mm. All right. My starters, my starters. Today we have a special guest by the name of Terence Langer. He's the SRC chairperson here at the University of Johannesburg, DFC campus. DFC, which is short for Durenfontein campus. He's an environmental health practitioner student in his final year. He's also a leader here. Besides SRC, he's going to be telling us about a major majority of things that he's busy with here on campus that speak to leadership and growth if you are joining us here for the first time welcome to it starts with you network with me less this is a platform where largely i do monologues but i also like dialogues and conversations where we can build we're dealing with mentorship discipline leadership we talk about money we talk about business and we talk about being the best versions of ourselves that we can be mr terence lang Welcome to the platform. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, the first thing I'd like to know is just in terms of your background. Tell me, where does Terence Langer come from? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm from Limpopo. Uh, I was born in a rural area called Bakimbek. Yes, so uh, I can say I'm the first child in mm. my family. First born? Yeah, first born. Oh, nice. Okay, it's a first issue. So, so you actually have to set the example for your siblings how many siblings do you have i have uh, one younger brother who's uh, seven years old too seven years yes. so there's a major gap between yeah, the two of you gap. okay so you are a big big brother i have a brother as well yes yeah i have a brother as well but the gap is only four years mine is seven because uh, i don't know but uh, that's how it is but he's okay. growing the gent and i'm grooming him towards what i am today Okay, nice. Yeah. Same mother, same father. Yeah, same father, same. Uh, okay. Same, same thing. Do you come from any tribe, or is there something special about your family <laughs> that we must know there in Limpopo? Uh, not yeah, you can say so. But uh, I'm from the Langa tribe in Limpopo, Mukopani, Bakimbek. Mm. Yes, so we. Uh, so I can say we are the ones that. Uh, uh, the tribal authorities mm. uh, we are in the we are, we are a royal family a royal family yes guys we have royalty in our midst yes, yes. we have royalty yes. in our midst yes. so growing up uh, one thing that i was taught it was discipline of the elders or anyone who's uh, associated with me mm. i can say so i can say i was groomed by the elders who are we, we used to be the leaders of that time because mm. uh, the, the royal family is composed of the chief, it has the donors. Mm. So, my grandfather was the chief of the Langa tribe. Okay. Yeah, so it, his name was Dennis Mashaba Langa. Is and there then, something written in the history books about it? Yes, yes. Oh, he, nice. yeah, he was the reservist by, of, in, in, the, in the time of apartheid regime mm. when the National Party was still the one that uh, in charge of the government of South Africa. Mm. So when, at some point, when he was still in the city, also trying to look for what he can do. Mm. So the family then called him to say, we are in need of a leader. Mm. Can you please uh, come to assist the village? Mm. So the village is composed of 52 areas. 
Okay. So, yes. So meaning that we have 52 donors mm. and one chief. Okay. Yes. And the chief currently is still from the Langa lineage. Yes, the, yes, it's still into the Langa lineage. Okay. We, there are still though some issues of you know when there should be reviewing of mm. the genealogy to yes. appoint or to I can say how to, to have a success uh, to have a success yes. in that way because we last year my grandfather Philip Langa passed away. Oh, yes, so, condolences yeah, and may yes, soul rest so, in peace. Eh? Yeah, so it was like yeah. that. So now we're still having to have those things that are internally in the family that we have to review mm. what, is, what is to be done for the village to have mm. a leader. And that's okay. how it is. Yeah. So then you grew up under the shadow of, of leadership yes. in this royal, royal uh, trajectory in, yes. in the form that you were learning how to lead people. Yes. What what would you say was your the biggest attribute that you took when 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 your grandfather was leading and listening to the Ndunas as the chief? I'll tell you why I asked this. Yes. There's a guy called Simon Sinek in the States. Yeah. Yeah? And one of in one of his speeches, he talks about how when he looks and assesses the chiefs of the past in Africa the biggest attribute, leadership attribute that they had mm. was to talk last. Just to listen throughout as to what everybody else is saying and what everybody else has to offer and then to talk last. And that's the big lesson that he learned there. In your case, what would be that attribute that you took from your grandfather's leadership? Uh, I can say as much as you are referencing to say you need to be able to have listening skills mm. You need to be able to consult with the people because as a leader of people you cannot be able to decide or think mm. on the behalf of the people mm. so it is always important to be able to consult people mm. and hear what are they actually looking for mm. in your uh, in your leadership mm. time because mm. uh, if i can decide something and it doesn't satisfy everyone it becomes mm. an issue mm. so through consultation and listening and uh, that's where you get to be taking guided decisions. Mm. Yes. Mm. No, no, nice one, nice one. And then when did you step up, whether it's primary, high school, or here at the university, when did you say, okay, I'm ready to step up as a leader? Uh, okay, in my grade, uh, I think in grade 12, mm. 2019, mm. I was the deputy president of the Lena's representative council. Mm. So is this here at the university already? It was, yeah, it was actually in high in school. Matric. Oh, in matric. matric. When I was oh, in my yes, matric. Yes. So I've started to to put more commitment into assisting people mm. because most of the things that I saw from my grandfather was to do that thing. Anything that has to do with people mm. he always attends either it's a funeral it's a wedding or anything so mm. that thing it taught me to say at all times you can be able to commit yourself to mm. own the people how mm. it's because of perhaps i can say it's uh, the the assignment mm. of being a leader is to redress the grievances of the society mm. so that's the only thing that i've learned for, uh, for time and then when i was the deputy president i saw the need to have the farewell of the matriculants Oh. So by that time, I cannot say I was I was good in terms oh. of realizing who I was. Oh. But I took the initiative to say we didn't have money to conduct the farewell. But oh. I had oh. to put the strategy through consultation. That's what I think that I can say uh, the most attributes that we put in the leadership is consultation. Oh. Oh. You check with the people. And they, when you take decisions, mm. they will be guided decisions that mm. cannot be disputed when you bring them back to such to, to the table. Yes. Right? And then was it a successful uh, farewell? It was a successful mm. farewell. So I remember we just had to find strategies uh, which we have put in place. I think we thought of it in March. Mm. There was a teacher of mine, uh, uh, Mr. Dihashu. Mm. He also liked me very much. Shout out, Mr. Dihashu. 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 Shout out, Dihashu. Mr. Dihashu. Yes, so he was the teacher of mine who always used to tell me that your brother used to be here. I used, actually, I have a brother who used to study at the school that I went to. So you have an older brother as well? Uh, it's, uh, it's like, uh, is the son mm. of my sister's mother okay yeah yes. very in the yeah, african like, tribe everyone whether you're a cousin yeah, or whatever, yeah. so it's it like that is yeah. my brother 
So I grew up in front of him also. Mm, okay. So at some point, the teachers will come to me that you see you have a potential to do this thing. Mm. So I will reflect on myself to say, what do these people see in me that I don't see? Because mm. I was committed, but not on the basis that I'm realizing who I was mm. by that time. Mm. So then planning the event, I was with my colleagues. Uh, we went to class to class, mm. consult that this is a strategy that we are going to put in place mm. so that the metric lens can have a farewell. Mm. I want to find that also I consulted to the uh, to the tribal authority that mm. we are going to need assistance. Then they have managed to put more financial resources that the farewell can become a success. Mm, yes. Nice. Then fast forward to the end of metric, everyone at that time, they are thinking about the next stage in life they want to get into university what is the key thing that pushed you into wanting to get into university uh one thing that also my grandfather advocated for was to be educated mm. so that you be able to understand uh, to have a broad thinking in mm. all things that mm. has to do with the society mm. so i didn't like meds in, in, in my Metric. Metric, yeah. yeah. So the only thing that I wanted to be was to be under Department of Health. Mm -hmm. So firstly, I wanted to become an orthopedic surgeon. Oh, but, ah, uh, you were thinking big. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the school in its own it was compromised. I can say. Mm. So I had to say, okay, what type of a course which can be able to assist me to at the end I can be within the public health, mm. and then because only. The health is the one that matters in the community. Because mm. if they, 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 okay, I can say I can go to why I chose environmental health because mm, mm. it it was it seemed as a broad cause that I even so after the orthopedic surgeon. Sorry to cut you off. After mm. the orthopedic surgeon uh, thought process, your next choice was environmental health. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. yes. Actually, the to the orthopedics, I liked it when I had a fracture. It was actually on the 27th of April, 2016. Mm. I still remember it. Mm. Yesterday I posted you in a picture of mine. On say, Freedom Day. Yeah, I, <laughs> it, I got a fracture. Okay. So I went to be admitted in a hospital. So that's why I realized that there was a doctor called Dr. Chisikule. Mm. Yeah, Dr. Chisikule. Wanna give him a shout out? Yes, yeah, Dr. <laughs> Chisikule is the one that inspired me to actually feel like I want to be like this man. Nice. Yes, yeah, nice. so I can I be able to do medicine? Mm. He always told me that study hard, you'll be mm. able to do that. The only thing that compromised me was mathematics. Okay. Uh, then, but I loved theory because mm. I know that mathematics is not really a major thing mm. in, the, mm. uh, in the medicine field. Mm. But it's problem uh, yes, solving. Yes, probably a problem solving. Yeah. So there's another teacher of mine who was uh, Zulu. Mm. He studied chemical engineering here also in this campus. Then I engaged him that I want to study in the university. Mm. And then me going to study in the universities because I want to go to get skills mm. and come back, use them in the village to solve any issues that can be complex. Because remember, with the leaderships, we don't get to be qualified for certain things. Mm. But you need to always have literacy behind what you are going to do because mm. there are going to be things that need you to be able to read, mm. to understand, and have communication mm. skills because that's how you have to describe yourself as to say leading in this leading the people you mm. need to be able to understand mm. and then when you understand them it it, it, it is guided by how also you are educated mm. not that an educated person yes. cannot be able to to listen or mm. do those kind of things mm. but also then i had to say no let me choose environmental health because mm. mm. it had uh, research i love research okay and then it has uh, skills for problem so you solving. love theory you love research you love skills for problem solving yes, yes. and you want to use them all as tools to give back to, to where you come from yes. as a leader yes. that's okay, a, that's nice. what i uh, had to enroll for nice. only to find that it was a very good course mm. and i enjoyed it from the time when it was Dr. Mbonan, yeah. yeah, he was teaching me introduction to environmental health. Mm. So yeah, I, I got a distinction in nice. that uh, module. Nice. So it was where I realized that no, I actually want to this course. Mm. I'm going to put uh, the level best of myself to be to become best mm. in this program. Mm. But only to understand that this course, it is for me, 
to go back to the society because mm. we deal with many things food control mm. there are many spaza shops mm. which are in my place how mm. can i best assist to to make sure that everything that is going to be sold in mm. the community is going mm. to be suitable for human consumption mm. we have rivers which are around and taking that uh, into consideration that we are in a rural area mm. so people can always look for to, to actually to go to harvest water in the rivers for mm. domestic use purposes but how do we best ensure that that water is clean mm. that's uh, one thing that i can say i mm. choose this concept nice and <coughs> you know when you look at environmental health versus a lot of other courses it's not as mainstream it's not as popular it's not as well known and it needs people like you and I, the loud mouths, yes. to put it on platforms so that people get to understand the value yes. that it brings, particularly in the health system, right? Yes. Just just to educate the starters a bit, we have preventive health, yes. it's environmental health, yes, right? Yes, yes. We have curative health, that's yes. where now your primary health care people go to clinics, they're already sick, yes, but yes. environmental health comes before in an effort to lower the number of people that actually feed into the public health system yes, yes. right when you talk about uh water pollution prevention yes where people who go and grab water yeah. uh, from the stream they need to be educated enough to say upstream let me not defecate in that water because downstream there are people yes, yes. that will be drinking that water yes, yes. right Going back to those spaza shops that you were talking about, yes, yes. making sure that the food is safe for yes. people to eat within the community, mm. because food is life. Yes. Food and water, yes. it's life. Then also the issues of waste, it's so it's vast, yes, but yes. it's not out there the way it should be. Yes. So I'm glad that I have someone who's not just a leader, but someone who understands the dynamics yes. of the health system yes. as well yes. for the benefit of the, the starters. Yes. Yes. So, uh, you in first year, you get a distinction in this introduction to environmental health, and then on campus, what activities are you doing? Because I'm trying to get to know when did you now fall into this wanting to be a leader, even in campus, SRC and the like. Uh, <clears throat> I can say uh, when I started to become university, mm. I was not much into the student politics or mm. student anything. I was. Mm more into UJ community engagement. Nice. So where we used to have uh, community outreach programs on, what is this, on farming, mm. uh, on tutoring. Mm. And then at some point I'll be trusted to lead people to say, no, I can be the one that comes on campus mm. and I do this thing and make sure that you no know, everything is in order. Mm. So then at some point uh, there were recruitment through my first year. Mm. So recruitment into saying they were having SRC elections. Okay. So actually I received also the SMS because it actually shows that you know you can be SRC without being in a certain political party or um, oh, okay. Yes. So uh, you wanted to be impartial and neutral at Yes, first. yes, okay. at some point. Okay. So only because I understood that no, I cannot be able to do that on my own because I was not really known by everyone. Mm. So I had to be able to market myself. But to market myself it was going to be within the community engagement mm. and then which is a small number compared to other societies which are contesting the elections particularly mm. the SASCO and the EFM. Mm. So by then, by that time, my concern was the national politics. I was not mostly in the student politics. Mm. So I realized that, okay, they, they are actually politics on the campus. Mm. And then my preference on the national politics is this particular party. Mm. So it was the Which EFM. is the economic yeah, this is the of economic part, part, yes. Okay. So then I said, okay, which I didn't know that it had a win by that time, which mm. is the EFF student command. Mm. So I was recruited, I met uh, the chairman, uh, which is the current chairman of the movement now. Mm. <clears throat> he was the political researcher of uh, a part by that time. Mm. So he told me that uh, he is committed in this thing, he's an activist, mm. but I'm also an activist. And then at some time I took uh, the definition of activist, which is saying you must advocate for the social change. Mm. But uh, how do we advocate for social change? It's when I had to realize that by me, from being in the community engagement, mm. I've worked with people. It's only through collaborations that certain things could be achieved. Oh, yes, 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 so. Yes. Then I joined the student command, not mm. on the purposes of to be in the SRC mm. or to be what, just because I loved the movement. Mm. And then from there, 
by also being in the movement, my commitment, my activities is the one that demonstrated that I could be today the chairperson in some point. But that time I didn't know because mm. it was my it was 2020. Yes, it was okay. 2020. Yes. Let me let me rewind us, take us back just a bit. So yes. the SASCO, then there's EFF. These yes. are the leading movements within the institution, right? Yes. yes. SASCO obviously has history. Yes. behind it. I yes. mean, when I was reading Steve Biko's book not so long ago, I can yeah. reading it. Yes. Sasko, you know, it appears yeah, there, it there appears, and there, yes. and it has this rich history. Then there's the new boys in, in, in the club, you yeah. know, yeah. The, the new guys that join and want to also lead, just yeah. like in national politics, yeah. the yeah. EFA. Yeah. Then they come. What type of thing made you gravitate towards the EFA versus this one that already has the heritage? behind it? Uh, I can say that uh, the EFF, uh, when I joined, I mm. had to compare in terms of the policy formulations of political parties. So only the policies of the EFF spoke to me as an activist mm. to say, this is what seeks to achieve the social change, mm. but it needs execution. We need to be committed. We need to be the one that marshals as much as possible behind the ban of the EFF. Mm. Many mm. people must be able to understand because I can say Sasko, it has, it had no way to say I can, you know, it, we were, we were demoralized as young people in terms of how the politics are characterized, mm. to say, maybe being a politician or being a politically affiliated, it is associated with nepotism, criminality, mm. those kind of things. Mm. So that's what then get to demoralize me to be in that political party. Okay. But not that that party has formulations to say everyone must be corrupt. Mm. It's mm. individuals who today demoralized mm. everyone. Then, then EFF came to me to say, okay, I read the policies to say we need decolonized education. Because okay. my understanding was to say the education that we are still having in mm. this country is not willing to equip us with the skills to go back to the society to to redress their grievances mm. instead it makes us to be good employees mm. who can always have a default mode thinking to think within the spectrum of how you are educated mm. but you can't do anything without outside that thing it's like we are thinking within the channels of how you are educated mm. so then the aff student command had that uh, as a cardinal pillar of food, mm. to say we must decolonize the education mm. though it's going to be a complex thing because mm. others they will think decolonization means that we must delete everything teach about blacks uh, white uh, we mm. don't go there mm. but we need the education that is going to improve the thinking because Maybe touch on one implementable strategy around that specific policy, decolonized education. Okay, our economics from the first, because we, the EFF says we must nationalize. Mm. In the schooling system, they teach you that privatization is more better. But to understand that nationalization can work only if we have a strong government that is led by the people mm. and then the leaders execute. Because mm. uh, the only thing that originates within the schooling system is to say privatization is more better mm. because it's where there are more, many, no many things that can be happening. The government has no interference, but you need to respect the government. Mm. But the privatization doesn't work for people. Mm. And then at the center of that, the nationalization is demoralized within the schooling system. Mm. And then that's where we speak to say nationalization is what we seek to achieve. Mm. Because in geography, we have the uh, sectors, okay, I can say it's economic geography. Mm. We have mm. the primary sector, mm. we have the secondary sector, we have the tertiary sector, we have the quaternary sector. Mm. So how do we then say we put nationalization of strategic sectors of the economy, which mm. is from the mines and also the banks. Mm. So if the mines are in the primary sector, mm. and then we have agriculture at the center of that, which is land, how do we work on the agricultural sector, which uh, as, as on the on the mining on the primary sector, mm. to ensure that with our tertiary sector, which is can be the education, the finance, management, actually microeconomics as a whole. We need to shift the thinking within the schooling system mm. to say, we, let's work on the primary sector. Secondary, let's be able to process what is on our ground, mm. on our own, to benefit ourselves. Mm. So the tertiary, how do we manage it in terms of equipping people with skills to, to make sure that we drive the primary sector properly? But at the center of that, we need quaternary, which you can be equipped by the high uh, institution of learning, mm. where you have to be making sure that the skills that the people are being equipped with is to understand how do we 
from primary to secondary, the country will be able to work around that way. So those things are not taught. Instead, they have been taught in the geography only to realize that they are driving the GDP. Mm. But at the center of that, the privatization, which is in the economics mm. and the education that is colonial, there's nothing that happens to make sure that we realize that, no, we need to work on the land. Mm. And then what is on the land is mine. Mm. What is on the land, we can practice agriculture. Mm. Then how do we then go to the secondary? Mm. What measures are we going to put in there to show that we're going to process these things. They are going to be valuable goods that can be produced locally. Mm. And then how then we go to say, we need to be going to gain foreign exchange. Mm. How do we export? How do we import? Then what is the need? What, what things do we need in the country? Mm. So those are the things that still the education we have now doesn't uh, focus on. Mm, Actually, primarily, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we have people who today, <coughs> they can ask you to say now, nah, they say we need to nationalize the mines. Mm. And then when we want to nationalize the mines, they say, no, the EFF will collapse the mining sector. Mm. But at the center of that, it's because the education that we're having is the one that makes us to think that way. Mm. Because if we are, we are much ready as to say the citizens are equipped with the skills, they will not dispute that thing because their people must be the one that works the ground. Because they are equipped with the skills which are necessary to drive the economy. Mm. That's how it is. And then so, the, so with all that i can see the big national picture yeah. from now a student command perspective what role looking at that principle of uh, decolonized education what role do you as the student command of the eff play to advocate for that and to push people into that level of thinking whilst they are in still in institutions that are governed by the current education system okay Okay, for, for I can say as much as from initially when we have realized the need to implement the cardinal pillars that we have in place today mm. to say we need a decolonized education yes. because the decolonized education will seek to achieve how we are going to be economically emancipated. Mm. So we, we, we are trying to engage the strategic sectors of the country from mm. the national level, I believe that the as a student command, you are yeah, dealing yeah, directly. Yeah, we have, we have okay. also the representatives, the, yeah, the national structure, okay. which most particularly focuses on such things. So when they then come to us as the uh, the local ones, yes. or the institutions, because yes. they are the ones that are presiding over everyone. Yeah. So the we, policy, yes, the we are, they, are, they are the ones that are doing that. We yes. have researchers in that structure, mm. which are tirelessly engaging with the Department of Education to mm. say. We need to change this thing. Mm. As in the institution, as, as the branches of the student command, mm. we are engaging with different types of department, humanities particularly, mm. of uh, the education. Mm. Uh, the, the, we need to make them to realize that the education that we have mm. doesn't promote thinking. Mm. But again, the very same education, it makes people to, to think that, no, we, we are on a project. To, to, to come with the history that is black pro. Mm. No, we are not speaking of that thing. As much as we said that South Africa belongs to all of us, mm. let us be able to have the education that is not even private. Because mm. now we're having people who are from private school, they're different from the one that is public. Mm. So that is how then we're saying that let's have an education system that is the same and that is going to benefit the country. So oh. that is uniform and yeah, streamlined. Yes, yes the ideas into actionable deliverables yes, yes. on both sides. Yes. But now we're different. Mm. Like, to be honest, we're different. But how will mm. that difference actually come? Because when you look at the structure of education at a lower level, at basic education level, they are structures like the EFF, they are structures like SASCO, they are structures that speak to the political will that starts here at tertiary. You have your class reps. You were you said you were deputy? A president of Lena's representative council, yes. There at high school. Yes. And at that point, it's only when you got here that you learned of this. So looking at that, how is it gonna affect the public private partnership in the education sector at basic level? Before coming here at tertiary, how do you change something that already started at that foundation? Uh <clears throat> I can say the EFF student command the last day uh, at the resolution to say we're going to have uh, the EFF uh, learners command. Nice. Yeah, we're going to have EFF learners command. 
only to marshal everyone behind mm. the economic freedom in our lifetime. Mm. So that is on its own, it still becomes an issue because we need human resources. Mm. We don't need the country, like as young people who are, who are demoralized politically, mm. people still think that no, we are hooligans, we are people who like fighting. Mm. Because we're fighting because the system that we live under, it doesn't favor us. Mm. And then the, it, it... By us, you mean black people? Yeah, they are black people. But not to say we're in exclusion of white people. Mm. Because we, 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 we live in, the, we, in a country that has historical disparities, that uh, we had an apartheid. But now we want to forge for mm. us. We can have a say also we think. Mm. But how do we have a say? Because now we were given only the, the political power since mm. 1994. Mm. That is why you can check our public institutions, the service delivery of the country. It's good on the paper. Mm. But in terms of execution, for in terms of money, we don't, the government has no money. Mm. It has to rely on the transnational corporation, mm. which at the center of that, those companies, they used to fund the government to avoid the tax. Mm. So we can take into, uh, let's say, for instance, SARS. Mm. SARS never it was not existing before in the national park. Mm. It came into the uh, democracy mm. time. So this is the body that is being used to be able to channel the tax of the country through the private sector. Mm. But the private sector at the center of that, it, it avoids it connives with the very same people to avoid certain tax. They at the center of that, mm. they established the SASA. The SASA is the money that is generated in the private sector mm. and they put it in the SASA mm. and then they go to silence the people on the ground. So those are the things that we are coming to to address as the EFF mm. command to make people to be aware of what is happening. Those are dangerous allegations to say they are colluding in the back. The private sector is colluding with the structure that they built when uh, the 94 government came in. Yes. As the EFF, do you have something that will back you to back up that statement of saying SARS is not just a revenue collector for all parties, but it works on behalf and for a certain minority elite? Yes, uh, I, <clears throat> I can't... <clears throat> Sorry, sorry. Let me get you some water. Okay. Yeah. It's not as as cold as, as I would have loved it yeah. to be. Eh? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I will actually. I wanted to look for something. Or oh, you are going to edit it? No, it's fine. Okay. The the beauty of the podcasting regime yeah. is that uh, you just go with the flow. Yeah. 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 Okay. There there was. Uh, I think it was uh, gazetted or it was recommended by the Deputy Floyd, uh, Deputy President of the EFF, uh, Floyd Baum, mm. where he, uh, I think, uh, demonstrated how the SARS has no uh, like strategic policies to hold accountable the companies which are engaged in, uh, in, in avoiding of tax. Because mm. uh, in his study, I think he so that from since 1994 or prior before there, mm. South African government lost approximately 270 billion. Billion? Yes. On, as a result of, because there, is no, there are no strategic policies which holds the private sector accountable. Mm. And then at some point they use uh, this body, this, uh, the, 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 the ones that are in control of the ruling class, I can mm. say so. Mm. They use this body as SARS to threaten some of the black entrepreneurs. I don't mm. want to be too, it's not racial, it's mm. a fact. Because it happened with uh, DJ's Boo, I think. Because mm. DJ's Boo started Mofire. Mm. Mm. And then when he started Mofire, SARS... Attacked. Shout out Mofire! Yes, so <laughs> at some point he was saying, they were saying that he was owing 15 million. And then that 15 million, uh, you can analyze it into say, they, they, we are still living in the apartheid economy. It's no longer about the physical economy. Mm. They are they are doing anything that saves the the, the ruling class because the the market was been threatened. The market of all these uh, energy drinks, yeah, energy drinks mm. was threatened. So they used this body to threaten. Mm. The same with the commander in chief of the EFF, the Julius Malin, mm. when he was raising the issue of to say the land is stolen. Mm. They used SARS against him. Mm. They said no, you are owing SARS. Mm. 
Oh. Then that's the only thing that he was not able to silence him. He mm. continued to say, but I'm telling the truth. Should mm. I hide the truth from the masses? Mm. Then that's when it, we realized that the SARS mm. is not actually existing what we think it exists. Because mm. if it was existing for the reasons of, to say, uh, what it serves to say, it's a service that it has to offer. Mm. There are some things that calls uh, the tax returns. Uh, mm. They say this money that the citizens must be able to get. Those are the things that we are still not even aware of. Because we go again back to the education. Are we mm. taught? Mm. We are not taught. We have been taught only to be driven into a certain direction mm. so that we can think that way. Mm. And that's it. Okay. No, I hear you. You are quite in tune and well versed in terms of the political dialogue and yeah. the complexities that are existing currently in the country and it demonstrates also your leadership capability yeah. in terms of not only schooling not only community engagement but also the political sphere yes yeah. right so you go into this community engagement then you are invited to join the student command party then what then catapults you to this position now of being the chairperson at this campus? Uh, I think we, in the previous year, mm. yes, uh, yes, we had a COVID-19. Yes. So the COVID-19, it's where most of uh, our comrades realized that uh, my thinking was different mm. with regards to the COVID-19. Mm. I always told them to come to an end. It's nothing. It's, mm. it's, it's a lie. Uh, brought by the global powers to control the economy to put us in debt as this country because uh, remember they are using these bodies like IMF mm. those kind of things so I told them that uh, let's not protest by fighting the university mm. uh, in line to say we have to be following the precautionary measures that are in place we must wear masks those things let's apply for a protest in terms of uh, the country's constitution mm. that authorizes to have a peaceful protest mm. so that's why they saw that there's some theoretical background i had mm. and then it will always guide my practice mm. so then from there can i pause you just a bit yeah. you know the platforms that we are on yes they are not owned by us yes they are ran by global corporates and yes. so on youtube for example yes it's owned by google yes right and there's certain types of content that will get shadow banned, yeah. so to speak, based on how they are addressed on their very same platforms. Yes, yes, yes. So in respecting their platforms, I can't let that slide. I'll need to just, for us to rewind a bit and get back to it and say, as an EHP, here's this new disease, it's introduced into a pandemic status for the entire world right yeah, yeah. and then as an ehp instead of advocating for not only the precautionary measures but mm. educating people around the disease as per what the world health organization was saying mm. you were advocating around the political view around it yes so i want to see how you're gonna fuse those two dynamics because we are living in a time that's forever changing and advancing and COVID-19 if the theory that you put forth is the theory that is then another type of disease can develop in the next five ten years and you're already in the field or in the political arena with the background knowledge that you have how would you justify that view uh, from a scientific and also social political social economic point of view okay First of all, I can say, my my I I, I can say, COVID nineteen, it is uh, it is some a disease that was introduced on the purpose again to instill fear, particularly on the African continent, and then also take into consideration the economic wars which are taking place in the countries to demoralize other countries, as we don't have a hand in this thing. Of, to say, remember, it's like myself, my understanding is to say, I can be an HP, but I always don't like to think with how I'm taught, because mm -hmm. there's an education that I get outside the school, mm -hmm. and then on the scientific base level, to say, why do we have to have COVID-19 
and then at the center of that be forced to save our lives so my my initial protest was on the base of to say that time let me go to that when yeah. i was in the protest we wanted to protest to have a choice because the country has constitutional rights for us to have right to life so remember in in in, in microbiology i can say in microbiology there's something called the selective toxicity so the selective toxicity it has to it, it, it has to be like when you produce a medication or a vaccine, you must be able to test it on a clinical trials, first, second, and the, and the third one. Mm -hmm. So this this thing, it is imposed on us when it has not yet proved for, for uh, that it can be safe. It can it, it can show you that when it enters a human body, it is going to, to, to destroy the pathogen instead of harming the host. So that oh, so the protest at the time was in relation more to the vaccine yes, and not not to the knowledge around COVID, the pathogen yes, itself. Yes. Okay. Yes. So I can say that uh, there's some um, protein synthesis. <coughs> it's water. You mm. drink water. Yeah. No. You can have your water, my brother. Uh, okay. I can say. COVID that time myself, let me go to say the selective toxicity. Again. Yes. The selective toxicity, it, my understanding by that time was to say, I don't have problem with the vaccine. But my, my concern was that why I cannot have a choice. And take into consideration now that I'm a health practitioner. Mm. I understand the role of uh, having to humanize and then also to prevent. Mm. But you cannot force a person and also try to instill fear that uh, they can't access certain things. Remember, the university were the, were the shareholders of the university, were mm. the majority shareholders. Mm. If the students are not here, there is no lecture, mm. there is no university at mm. all. So we were not given a choice by that time. Mm. So that's why I brought to it to the table of the student commander. Mm. Let's, let's take it into this thing. Mm. Only to find that the SRC by that time, it was led by us. But remember, certain individuals, when they get to preside in the SRC, I'm sorry to say this thing, they get to change. It's the same way ANC won the government, mm. but it was not the government, it was radical. Mm. So after they were on the payroll of the government, their perspective then changed. Mm. Then becomes certain people that we don't know. We, th we thought that at the time that 1994 came, they were going to assist us. Mm. So we engaged the SRC. We said, no, the president particularly, we said, please do this thing for us. Mm. Uh, we want to have the choice. Mm. So we went to ENCA, then he said, no, we must not be forced to take the vaccine. Mm. But it was not clear on that thing to say, he stands with the view that we don't want it. Mm. We, some of us, we don't want it on the basis of how we think about the issue of COVID-19, mm. not to say it in this platform, but mm. it, we had our own perspective mm. to say, mm. we don't want to be involved in those things. Mm. And then take into consideration that there was a Pfizer document which was released to show that it had 1,000 side effects. Because my understanding is that side effects, are, it's like they are, these are the diseases, it's like side effects is diseases which are caused by medicine, but nicely called so. You get my point? <laughs> <laughs> no, you, I think there yeah. you, are, you are oversimplifying it because uh -huh. a, a headache is not a disease but uh, it can be a side effect of a particular medication yeah, or a okay. particular thing that, that that you get you know yeah yeah so let's say okay we have a heartbeat that is going to be fast yeah so after you take you take this uh, uh vaccine inoculation yeah. so yeah so when 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 you when you take the vaccine and you have you are going to have a heart your heart beating fast mm. in terms of physiology what will happen to say if your, your your heart beats fast what can happen if that thing also it causes thrombosis mm. to say the vein they, they can be they, they can be blood clots and mm. then when they say blood clots that thing it can hinder the level of hemoglobin mm. and then at the center of that they say that you can you can have a short breathing mm. short breathing then it's caused by that uh, that, uh, that, that that thrombosis, uh, yeah. that, that thrombosis. Yeah. meaning that it's then it's how the disease the, 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 the side effects are going to likely to cause that thing. Mm. Because headache, it can be a minor thing, mm. but but imagine this one, when you are, you are going to have short breathing, mm. and then that time you have asthma perhaps, mm. then it will give you more issues. That, mm. Then that's like, let's not, uh, they even said, no, we can, 
we can exempt, meaning that the university is saying, let's disclose to say, why do we want to be exempted from mm. having to get vaccine, mm. which was not a problem. But it was something else to force us a medication. We didn't want to be forced medication. Mm. We're not against COVID-19. And my concern was that, let's put it on the table to say, UJ community, mm. that time, what is the deadline since 2020, the introduction of COVID-19? Mm. How many people on the UJ community were lost their life as the result that they were sick from COVID-19? Mm. Take into consideration that we stayed in our respective accommodation. There was no a time where they, they are, the residences are decreasing, that no, more people in the residences are admitted. It was just propaganda that was in the news mm. to say, today we're going to level five, uh, 1,000 cases are recorded. I think even now they are tired to, to give us the stack. Mm. They just want to, they, it is done, the, mm. the project that they had. So at some point I said, no, I'm, I'm in politics. I'm also in the health science, mm. but I cannot be deceived by politics. Mm. But I have to respect that this is a, a, it's a disease that exists. But my, my understanding was to say, why are we not having a choice? Mm. So then, then that's where politics came to say, no, let's protect the students. President did his own things. He said, no, we must not be forced. Let's be exempted. Mm. But that thing also was invading our This country. was what, the president of the country? Or uh, the country? president of uh, SASCO, on oh, this okay. campus. Because okay. that time I was not in the SRC. I was okay. the deputy chairperson of the EFF student command okay. by that time. Okay. So I tried to... So you were the guys that kicked them out in the next election? He's still now, he's still the president. Oh, okay. uh, he came back for the second term. Okay. Yeah. So, but by that time, I was engaging him because he was the one that has to represent all mm. of us. That okay. is in SASCO. I, I was not entertaining that. Okay. Day. So, he was not committed in responding to our concern. So, we said, okay, there was a medical, uh, uh, it was it was university alliance. Mm. Yeah. It was a body formed particularly to protect the students in the universities. Mm. So we collaborated with uh, uh, such a body, which was the Investor Alliance. It assisted us in terms of drafting the memorandum that we were going to submit to the senior director by that time to say, let the student have a simple thing, a choice. Mm. That's what we want. We don't. We are not against whatever that is around the disease, but let's have a choice. Okay, yeah. so then it was that type of thinking that made your com comrades yes. think, oh, hey, this guy, yes. this guy can actually lead us. Yes. And, then that's where they saw no, yeah. And then there's a guy of mine who's a, is a deputy chairperson of mine that's mm. there now. So at some point, I didn't believe in myself. Mm. Uh, so he called me in the morning. At, at, the, at the time when people were advocating for you to take up the seat, uh, you were was, yeah, I was, I was at the back. Yeah, I was skeptical. So last year, it was it was 2020 when did we have a protest it was last year mm. i think january mm. yes when, when when was when were we first to do this thing Ghana? i think it was uh yeah last year it was when the issue mm. of vaccine was mm. uh, was in yeah, yeah, it was yeah in the beginning of yeah so he called me in the morning mm. said my brother is the time when i was engaging the src to say in terms of this thing we're authorized to do this we're authorized to do this thing so I'm pushing it on the theoretical base and understanding the science of mm. it. Not to say let's approach it political and close the campus. Mm. The others, they say, no, we are people who are fighting, those mm. kind of things. So when he calls me in the morning, says, Mina, I'm going to meet this guy. He's a law student. Mm. Said, okay, Armara, I trust you. I can't go there alone. I didn't believe in myself. Mm. How can a person call me? But okay, let's fine, let's go. Mm. And we went to Brixton. Mm. When we went to Brixton, uh, we met this guy, he's a law student. And he tells us that his understanding as a law student is mm. we need to approach this matter like this and like this and like this. Because that time I was not into a, a law field, but I understood that we need to, if we're protesting, let's legalize yeah, it to protect yes, everyone. Yes. So then he said, no, the way to, the, to have a protest, you need a marshal, you need to inform the MPD, police must be aware that uh, this is a peaceful protest. Mm. No one is going to be harmed. Mm. But at that time, then, we are not SRCs. Mm. We have tried to go through it with the SRC. Mm. They are now captured by the university to think within. I wish that time I was in the SRC. Mm. I would have actually myself advocate for all students to say, 
they if they don't want this thing they should not want it because if myself i'm representing mm. them and i'm telling i'm speaking of their mm. behalf mm. there was no one who can uh, force them to take the mm. vaccine but because of some reasons of engaging the src doing these things we took it on our own ourselves mm. so we went to brixton to inform the police that we want to open the case against the university mm. to 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 because it's they are only they, are, they want to infringe our rights mm. to choose mm. or to have a choice mm. they say no Karno, we can't even access libraries mm. we can't access the campus mm. yet some of us paid the fees mm. so we why are, are we being treated this way on the basis that we need to be forced to mm. take the medication mm. but we are not against the medication mm. we just need to be able to have a choice mm. then from there it went to say no okay it's fine we did our paperwork it was fine and the university alliances brought us uh, the medical law lawyers now to say this is how we are going to to substantiate in terms of the researches which have been made behind the uh, vaccine from when it was uh, Produce. So, so just to just to interject there, the medical lawyers that are coming are pro vaccine at the time, or they, they are, are coming to inform you on of both sides. They are impartial. Yeah. Are they coming to inform you on both sides, for in terms of the the vaccine, or they just coming to sell and advocate for it at that time? They 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 understood that at some point the vaccine is not it is it was not really safe. And I was saying that there was selective toxicity that they were concerned about. Mm. That if you can take the vaccine, is it going to attack the pathogen and protect you as a host? That's what they did. Then through the research of clinical trials of vaccine, mm. they were always engaged in scientific research, CDC, checking their stats, Pfizer, FDA, uh, food, but it's food, yeah, it's why they approve these things, yeah. yes. So, Food and Drug Administration. Yes, yes. Yeah. So he, he, they went there, they did those uh, research. They came with compiled mm. patients which took vaccine. So they, they, they were not against the vaccine. Mm. They were just having to say, let's choose. Because they can be a student that is sick and doesn't want to disclose their sickness. Mm. And then when you force medication on such people and the medication still were skeptical about it, what, what happens to the life of that student? Mm. That is why we said, no, we need to just have a choice. Mm. Then the university, okay, it's fine. We, we, we filed our files, we had a protest. It was peaceful, we mixed races. Mm. It was the first time where I saw a protest with the mixed people. Mm. Yeah, because there were some of uh, people that didn't come, but they, 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 they just saw, okay, it was risk because mm. they thought they would be expelled. Mm. We told them that this is a peaceful protest. Mm. No one is going to be expelled. We submitted our memorandum. Mm. After some week, only to be told that in terms of the Higher Education Act, we cannot be able to represent the student. Mm. Yes, only to understand that, oh, it's, this thing is a procedure that they are using to silence us, but mm. it's fine. Let's go and exempt to just save our academic uh, yeah, mm. to, 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 to not continue because we can be, even be expelled. We don't mm. understand the agenda behind this thing. Mm. And then, but we're not against the medication. Mm. And at some point, because I was a student in environmental health, I understood the importance of prevention. Mm. And then, and only because of, on the basis of that, this immunization. Mm. But I always engage my lecturers that we are not people that are immunizing ourselves. Mm. And then, but we can find preventive measures that we can put in place, of which is vaccine mm. at this time, because vaccine has to be ver verified first mm. before it can be introduced to you. Mm. Then, so you go through at the time you go through this entire process. Mm. I want to bring it back home now to that's the, the, the moment where the confidence in you was building up as a leader. Yes, yes. I want to come back to you and the leadership profile that is you and say at that point then you saw that i could actually lead yes that's where i realized that no actually i can do this thing then i became more committed to help the student mm. there is a time where uh, certain things that the student will need i'll assist the student and to, to a point that i will feel like no this thing is simple because when i came to visit i, I actually i helped myself mm. so the, it was becoming easy when the student has an issue I know which system of the university mm. uh, to go to. I can't talk to the HOD or I can't talk to the dean before not mm. engaging the 
the, the, mm. the HOD. Mm. So those are the things that I've mastered. Then we had the climate change topic mm. in the SRC. Mm. Uh, it was uh, come, it, it was to say, let's see who our leaders think around this context of climate change. So, because I was the environmental health mm. at that time, you were the advantage. Uh, they they yeah. said no because I was a candidate yeah. to, to go to SRC. They said yeah. no, we, go and debate yeah. on our behalf. I was a representative from the student command, EFF student command. Yeah. There was a representative from SASCO. There's another one from SIF. Mm. And then there's an independent candidate who was there, I think. Mm. Oh, wow, it was SASCO, me, an independent mm. candidate, we're three. Mm. Yes. So we're debating around the climate change. Again, climate change, I associated it similarly with the COVID. Yeah. That I don't, I don't, give, uh, I don't believe in the climate change. Mm. It's, it's another uh, 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 project that is coming into place to, 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 to give even the directive rule, uh, like to say in the education system of ours, we must always emphasize the climate change only at the end that this thing will drive the decommissioning of our coal industry by the global West powers. Mm. That is what I understood about the climate mm. change. But not to say it doesn't exist mm. itself. Mm. It is there, but it, it comes with an this, agenda. Uh, in, uh, with an agenda mm. to do certain things. Mm. So even now, I can say, if we are having a climate change, one may ask himself that what is happening in the Arctic region now? Mm. If those ice, uh, that side of ice, it's melting, where do we then find the crude oil? Mm. Why are these Western countries and the Eastern countries fighting for that region? Mm. What if it's there? That, that's where there are going to be establishment of new and uh, natural resources mm. that are still not discovered. Mm. Most particularly the petroleum because it comes from the sea or whatever. The climate change can have its negative impact and also its positive impact. Mm. But when it is introduced to us, particularly even in our education system, to say, no, let's always emphasize, is to make us to believe that, no, actually we need to stop using coal. Mm. Because our, even we can check our carbon footprints, they are not as similarly to the Western world or the Eastern world. Mm. I mean, it was not even making sense to me that we need to decommission uh, the coal industry by that time because of the climate change while the china uh, is expanding its own uh, power stations for mm. coal and also we are one of the largest exporters uh, of quality uh, coal yes. and then at the center of that we are using a low grade coal yes so and which is the one to that operate our electricity yes. so and then we know that the the, the low carbon the the, the, the carbon the, the coal mm. which is low in, in quality it is the one that emits more sulfur. Mm. So those are the things that why do we export the high quality mm. coal and use uh, the low quality coal? Mm. But at the center of that, we want to be told about the climate change. Mm. So <clears throat> my, 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 my debate was around mm. those mm. issues to say, I don't have a problem with the climate change. Did you win the debate? Yeah, of course, I won. The, the, oh, like the, the SASCO was challenged, yeah. to be honest. It was yeah. challenged in that debate. Yeah, yeah I, I even felt like a, I don't have a problem with the differences as to mm. say we are from which part. But mm. I wonder why. what are the intentions of people having to say, let's not deep as the leaders. Mm. Let's learn from each other. Mm. But if now they came with the purpose to say, uh, they are going to win the debate, mm. only to find that they are, they are going to debate with an expert mm. on this thing. Because mm. I'm an environmental practitioner mm. student, mm. so I, I, there was no way they were going to win. You were out of their league. Yes, they were, uh, <laughs> there was no way. So, but on the political side, I engaged them because remember, politics controls everything. Mm. It controls everything. It's us at some point who are going to decide that no, let's close our uh, our minds for coal, and then uh, the the you as the EHPs mm. or the people who are within the qualified professions which will implement, yeah, will implement. Yeah. but okay uh, but you made this but you made this sound yes my brother <laughs> how <laughs> yeah so yeah. it was like but that yeah no it's fine okay it's fine. so it was like that so the debate was very simple it was around climate change mm. so when it was around climate change they started myself i i, I emphasized more to say this is an agenda to just drive mm. the decommissioning of coal. Mm. But I'm not against climate mm. change. I understand its impact. We have seen the incidents which happened mm. in KZN mm. as a result of the climate change. Mm. But the but way... there are other political uh, and social uh, geological uh, yes, factors. Yes, to, and then, 
I want to get to a point. Already you were a candidate now mm. for, for SRC. Mm. Was that the tipping point? That's what, that yeah. tipping, yeah, Was they, that the tipping point that said, hey, this is Yeah, the elections were actually taking place soon. Okay. I think it was uh, in two weeks coming. Yeah. Yeah. So and yeah. What, how large was the, pe the audience for, it was, the, for uh, viewing the debate? It was uh, approximately 300 on okay. the media. Mm. And then it was inside. It was in library, UJ mm. library. Mm. They, they even they took a live uh, mm. video of it. Nice. Yeah. So we I started. I presented my case to say mm. I don't have a problem mm. with climate change. Let's then us as the leaders who are going to be in future become in the government. Perhaps what is our understanding of climate change? Mm. What are the intentions of us having to have people being taught about climate change? But what then? on the geopolitics mm. it seeks to achieve mm. these people they want to take our coal mm. they want to they are establishing reserves mm. for it now in their countries so mm. that at some point after collapsing us into saying the coal is no longer the the, 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 the what is this the solar panels mm. that we are using mm. they're mm. gonna come back they're saying no it's no longer reliable mm. then who are we going to buy coal from? Mm. that's mm. what was my concern that mm. we must be futuristic not not think like now to think no let's close the mind let's close the minds for coal mm. it's the same now which is happening and i told them that is going to happen we mm. have a new minister of electricity mm. who was proudly saying that he and i bought a, 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 a generator mm. which is 15 years old mm. and then he says it has a lifespan of uh, 60 years mm. only this solution for energy crisis mm. and then the establishment of minister of electricity is in the preface of the president mm. doesn't account to anyone mm. so these people again politically or in terms of political economy they are driving the the privatization of the esco mm. so they want to devalue it through also using the education because remember now professors are going to do research mm. they are going to come around no the levels of what that are high mm. some are sponsored remember you can't speak back to the person mm. who gave money to mm. conduct your mm. research so you uh, they can be false things which are going to exist in that thing mm. so that's when i emphasize it that it's not a problem that a professor is going to say that climate change is dangerous mm. i trust my also my thinking without mm. also being qualified because mm. i have to think or oh, no this thing to me, it doesn't make sense because mm. how do we deal with climate change but we still export mm. climate change? Of course, the very same thing that they say is a mm. major cause of uh, climate change. Okay. So then, as uh, those people, yeah, they debated, but I. Uh, but you won the debate. Then, fast forward two weeks later, yeah, then the elections later. take place. Yeah. Then you uh, reign supreme as the SRC chairperson on this campus. Yes. Because according to the records I saw, I'm not sure if it's for 2022 mm -hmm. or it's for this year, it shows that two campuses in UJ, Asasco, two campuses are run by the EFF. Yes, it's like that. Yeah. yeah. The, the you guys, is it DFC and, and Kingsway? Yeah. Oh, Kingsway. Yeah, we didn't contest oh. APB. Um, and so it <clears throat> so it we did contest okay. but uh, yeah. they had uh, some issues where they didn't manage to win the 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 the, the, the election okay yes so but we still have issues of to say uh, we will never have to have where we can win mm. as the eff student command because the system is against us Mm. as in favor us is a, it's like the same way that next day we're going to have national elections mm. there are many people who are still thinking that no the ff exists for foreigners mm. those kind of things even on the campus they are not they are skeptical to say should we have a president mm. that can be from the eff student command mm. this campus can be can be very chaotic because mm. there are many things which are burning in this university mm. and then at some point the system you can will to change them but the system is very brutal and it's been against us you can't you would like to do certain things for instance the international students mm. they are required to not owe anything and then at the center of that this is the university that it says the second best in africa mm. but it doesn't want to solve the issues of uh, other african countries mm. so that is our concern even if you can uh, seek to achieve it the president is of sasco now as mm. we speak uh, Obvious, some even some point he said in the debate that I'm not an NT guy. I then realized that no, he was still challenged in terms of having these things into mm. because he himself he can't speak back to his government because okay. this needs government intervention. Mm. They need to come to say, How do we best assist the universities? Like, 
how do we assist the university to say there's money for also the international students, but not the government on its own. It goes to then government of NC working with the other African countries to say if we're offering education within the SADC, for instance, mm. the, why should we not have to say if I'm studying in Botswana, I can be able to benefit from what is the system that benefits like for instance NSFAS is not for it's not for people from Lesotho. Mm. They can't benefit from it. But we are next doors. Mm. Understand? But and then not that, even next doors, they are landlocked within the country. Yes, they are like that. So but they can't benefit from it. Mm. Those are the things because there's lack of collaboration between how even history had to be. Like we needed to have United States of mm. Africa and such things are still having issues. And we go back again to say decolonized education. Mm. Would we realize the, the, the importance of Africa United? We don't see it. Because the people think that they also the issue around borders. It's uh, it's like we're meaning that everyone must just come to South Africa. And then we don't mean that mm. they, they... Okay, tell me this now. <coughs> Thinking from a leader with a strategic mind. Yeah. Some of these issues that you attribute the university burning under yeah. you who are fighting against the system what are some of the things that you have in place or can put in place to counter them for the benefit of the students uh so far so good then. for example the challenge of of, of uh, the mindset or the opinion on and perspective of people around the the national the foreign nationals yeah you know how wh what are you doing to change that mindset so that the belief of the people is not the same as it is currently even in terms of the student audiences uh there, there are things that we do in, on campus we have societies of uh, uh, international students so we always manage to engage the finance uh, student finance on the basis of to say the policies i can say from the institution they are not really they are good also on the paper there's 50 percent that you must pay but it is possible that you can be able to pay at least 30 percent mm. and then which means that now we need to then come to say let's propose 30 percent to be a solution then next time we can negotiate for 15 percent mm. then it shows that there's a loophole within how they want this uh, money from mm. the students but uh, for us to change it we need to collaborate we need to be as much as many to think the same way and then to implement the solutions which will best help every one of us because now as as the SRC, we can think of many things mm. but the students on their own they 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 they, they can put more input because we are only 10 mm. and then to think on solutions which uh, 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 frustrates more than 15,000 students on this campus becomes mm. another thing. We need them to come here, then they will give them a political will. Mm. That's how it is. So, so what type of platform <laughs> have you commissioned to be able to reach these 15,000 students so that the viewpoint and the decisions that are made will then benefit them? Uh, like, uh, okay, remember that we, for, from my own, we are a campus SRC, mm. so certain things we are limited to. We rely on the central SRC, mm. so meaning that they are the other ones that can, based on what we we, we, we can suggest as campuses, mm. and then they can be the one that engages the management on that level. Mm. So as we are limited those kind of things, we mm. can assist students on the basis of to say, are they academically excluded, are they financially excluded, are they in the disciplinary area, and those mm. kind of things, that they are not really the central is the one that actually is the big body of the mm. SRC, so it can do much, much things that you mm. pass as the campus SRC. So you are more uh, on an operational level, yes, yes. they are more on a strategic level. level. They have okay. to put, uh, they have to drive us into yeah. their own uh, the objectives or mission that, you know, let's achieve this thing. But and currently the, the, the central SRC is under which With which the policy. The coalition, oh, because okay. uh, oh, it's to the side, to the side. Yes. Okay. So the president is of Sasko. Okay. So we we engaged certain times. At some time when I was elected, after knowing that I'm going to be the chairperson last year, mm. I've engaged him to say, which solutions can we put in place, uh, uh, initiatives, mm. fundraising initiatives, mm. in particular, mm. to say let's then contribute to the student aid. Mm. Uh, then. 
perhaps uh, our differences in politics, uh, it was to say, no, it could be like I'm advised it by was the a EFA. stumbling block. Yes, then that's what it is. And then also the coalition on its own, it becomes a chaos. Mm. Because this one wants this one. On the campus is better. Our issues on campus are not similarly to at Central. Mm. Yeah, us as campus, it's like if it's EFF student command, is the EFF student command. What we do here, yeah, it will be having to do with what all of us we believe in. Mm. So when it goes to the central, it goes with people from different political mm. parties. This one is from uh, SAS, this one is from the EFF student command. And then take into consideration that uh, certain things because of politics cannot be achieved. Like uh, uh, to say, let's engage the management to say they must, they must crumble away the, the registration fee. Then SASCO can have its own perspective. Mm, because mm. as we believe that we don't have to pay such things. Mm. They, they must be intervention. And goes back to the policies of the EFF student command and the EFF also. Mm. To say, we need the economic power. We need mm. the government that is economically powerful. Mm. Not to have political power where the, the students will take time to receive allowances. Mm. Those are the dragging things that we, 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 are, we are actually concerned about. Mm. And then it worries a lot when the students are not even... That, that is why I'm, I was saying we they are demoralized in terms of to say they want to participate in the political arena because they think or this field it's a field that is filled of corruption those and it's not like that it, it, their individuals could be corrupt mm. but the politics co uh, controls the country and then it's like a it's a it's a field where we need more different professionals to work together to bring solutions for the society mm. that's it then you can be now we, <clears throat> was speaking of nationalization of mines, mm. which will make the government to be powerful. But the mines are not going to be run by politicians. Mm. It cannot be. Like, we need miners, uh, mining engineers mm. on, <clears throat> on this campus. Mm. My, my, my throat. Yeah, no, that's why I brought you lots of water. <laughs> so so you touched on, on the education, <clears throat> the issue of registration fees, mm. which sprang my mind into the issue of free education yes where do you stand on the issue of free education at the, higher <coughs> institutional level uh, mm, mm. yeah no free education so on the <coughs> on the issue of free education as i was saying that uh, we are given the political power mm. instead of the economic power. Mm. So the issue of the free education, it comes to the policy formulation of the government. Mm. The EFF speaks of the nationalization of banks. It speaks of nationalization of mines and strategic sectors of the economy. Meaning that at that time, the government will be economically stable because mm. if the government it controls its own mines. There is no Anglo that owns a mine. There is no an individual mm. who owns mines in this country. They are state controlled, mm. but they benefit the, the state in terms of channeling that man into the state to then come back to the state must be able to say, this is the money for education. If the universities need one trillion to run all of them, mm. they, get, they will get it from the government. Mm. If they need two trillion, whatever the man cost now, We'll have the state, we have to have the, also the state reserve bank mm. where we're going to offer affordable credits to the strategic class forces where we know, okay, if the university needs to operate on this certain level, the same way university runs on its own, mm. it will be ran by the government by that time. But now it is there, I can, I don't know if maybe I can say they are too private or what. Mm. They, 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 are, they collect from the citizens instead where you are supposed to be coming to the like it's a public school mm. but this this government that is economically stable to make sure that everything that is in the institutions of higher learning is funded proper mm. that's when i say okay we need to have for uh, the tertiary sector these two from but must focus also on the primary sector mm. mines how do we then uh, control they say okay we have mines mm. we work on them we have the land we work on it then how we, where are the things which come from the min uh, minerals particularly mm. gold uh, platinum chrome all types of minerals which mm. exist on the uh, south african land how are they going to then go to the secondary uh, 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 sector mm. how are we going to then us as the state to process them here and then 
be the one that controls mm. the pricing of those things. Mm. But now the, those things are not in the government's hands. They are more into private sector mm. and then it becomes a chaos. Then that's where the, the free education can never be achieved because the government will always used to say there's no money. Mm. And then of which is the simple thing is to nationalize. Mm. Yeah. So in other words, it is achievable, just depends on the strategy. Yes. Even that even Dr. Blayton's man, he knows himself. Mm. He was a he was a communist. Mm. Yeah, he knows that he was a member of South African Communist Party. But today, as I said, they are speaking a different language. Mm. They are on the payroll of the government, and the very same people who pay them is the same one who are making money in the in the private sector mm. because they take it as a tax, and it gets to be money for presidents, the ministers, those things. Mm. So they can't speak back to these people. Mm. So right now, we just want this government and change the policies and to say nationalize. There should be state-controlled capitalism, mm. but on the ground, there should be a way that people benefit from when we, we 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 are owning the mines mm. as, a, as a government mm. and then they, they 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 must these goods must be processed local because it doesn't make sense to me like we have uh, mining engineers mm. but we can we today they don't have even I, I, like a view some of them don't have a view they think that we're going to call out the mining sector some mm. of them mm. we should not be having the education that also makes us to think that way mm. we should be having an education when we are going to have a state capacity. When you go out of this uh, schooling system, you are channeled into a, to enhance the state capacity. You are channeled to anywhere you can be working. Because remember now, when we have, <clears throat> we are going to have, uh, we are going to have, let's say, we scramble also the tenders. Mm. Meaning that if we want to, in, uh, we have infrastructure development, an engineer goes to that site. Mm. There is no way the time we are going to be unemployed because we need as much as possible human resource to assist the government. Anyone on, in the areas where there are mines, such people in those areas must be the ones that benefit from that thing. But who is monitoring that thing mm. instead of that? Mm. The government has to have intervention and mm. it is the one that controls it. Because now you can go to Rustenburg. The nearest uh, schools might not even have Wi-Fi routers. Mm. They might not even have proper roads. Some they have. Mm. They, it depends on the willingness of the person mm. who's inside the mine. Mm. But if now the, the government has economic power, that's what more matters, not the political power. Okay. Yes. No, thanks for that. So bringing it back down now to what is within your area of control as Terrence. You mentioned some projects which I found quite interesting. Yes. I want you to garner some support from the starters. Yeah. Uh, still, you can look at me, but we are talking to the starters. Yeah. And tell me about these projects that you have in mind and that you've already started from an administrative point of view to mobilize around so as to benefit the students here yeah. on this campus. Okay, so our plan of action for the Dorfontein campus, mm. we are going to have the Sustainable Development Goals uh, project. Mm. So I'm still in collaboration with the Civil Forum, uh, Mining Forum, and then there's another uh, other societies. Mm. Mostly uh, my focus was on the Civil Forum because they're the ones that also approached me. Mm. And then actually initially I had this project, mm. but I need to specifically check which goal like <clears throat> my i wanted goal number nine which mm. is more on industry and innovation mm. so we need to engage around those things okay our country is uh, it's in need of solutions mm. what can we do as young as we are mm. now to best assist our government mm. we cannot always critique it but we must realize that we are also scholars it goes to the issue of to say unemployment mm. let's let's volunteer with the skills we have then we are going to be able to, at some point, get the funds of what we always be using our skills based on our education background and working together. Mm. So now we're going to have a, a sustainable development goal, pro, a, a goal number nine in particular. Project. It's a, yeah, it's a yeah. project, or it can be first start with engagement to say, who has what type of an innovation? Mm. Civil industry, what, what is it that you can do mm. to best assist the country? Mm. Mining. The EFF speak of to say let's nationalize the mines. Mm. What is we're saying that thing? How are you going to assist that we're going to have technologies to discover more minerals? 
extraction metallurgy also they are mm. here this this university has actually everything mm. but mm. the students are drifted away from what controls the country which is politics mm. so they need to be aware to say politics it's a field of where we have to work together mm. with our different skills mm. then that's how then i can say this project can be the one that can best assist okay yes. so if <coughs> i'm understanding you correct yeah. me so you are going to different faculties and departments within the university, the university. Yeah. you are engaging with the smart minds here yeah. to find out what industrial innovations they can come up with that will feed into mm. the bigger community yes. and the country yeah. at large right so have you already mobilized and started or you're you are still in the process uh, <coughs> I, <coughs> sorry sorry mm. i've met with the civil forum mm. a chairperson they invited me to their opening function mm. and then i went there told them that uh, we need to work together mm. as the src our our term is very short mm. but as you as the civil forum we are a forum that is going to still ongoing mm. next year i might not come back as an src mm. person but let's have a plan that we can put in place that the src that comes next year mm. will continue from mm. it so but particularly it should be focusing on innovation mm. and industry develop uh, industrial developments like uh, we can check today also the mechanical engineers mm. i was engaging them on the base of to say the production uh, the plants of the uh, of, uh, of, of industries mm. they're the ones that should innovate them on the side of the military also mm. we, we need to have a gun that can be produced in by them mm. by their innovation mm. we need them to implement the plants that can be able to say when we nationalize the mines mm. we have technologies which are in place to process our goods mm. then that's what i need them to impart them with that particular knowledge oh, yes. nice nice then so that's one project yes uh, tell me about the second project the the second project uh, uh remember we were having it difficult to say they they, they get to be very uh, delaying the, mm. the management of the university mm. so one of it was uh, on the financial literacy why why do we need financial literacy we mm. need to equip the students with the skills which are necessary to own the campus how to manage their finances because mm. it creates a burden where you need to assist people that cannot be able to manage their finances mm. but only to find that okay let's say for instance they they receive the ns first and then <coughs> ask them when they come to come to complain mm. they will what they'll say no we need this thing for materials of study mm. at some point again financial literacy will assist them to say if you are going to need a laptop mm. use that money to buy a laptop because mm. tomorrow you are going to now be subjected to an f7 mm. academic exclusion mm. which is led by the financial illiteracy mm. of the money that you got you didn't mm. use it for what you are supposed to be used mm. for so we need to equip students with such skills that they must take it upon themselves to be responsible because at some point managing finances it will be going to you at some point mm. when you are employed mm -hmm. you need to be able to know okay this is the man that i can use it for this is the man i can be used for mm. and then at the center of that imagine if you are a manager and then that time you are not having financial literacy mm. so those are mm. the things we'll call uh, uh, lecturers professors from different fields to mm. best assist because mm. i believe that as much as i'm, I'm i just they see the need mm. but they are the people that can best assist with with, with their expertise mm. within that particular field mm. so, okay that's yeah. actually a good one because a lot of people when they join the workforce yeah. because they didn't have this foundation yes they learn how to open accounts here in Tesha. You yes. know, during my time, yeah. they you would be approached. Yeah, yeah. You go to small street in Johannesburg, uh, you want to go to Carlton Center to yeah. buy groceries and walk back. Yeah. You'll be approached around issues of opening accounts with yeah. your pocket money yeah. already. Yeah. You don't understand the amount of debt yeah. that you are going into and learning about debt and budgets and managing your money at the foundation phase. Mm is actually quite an important yeah. endeavor yeah. so start as if there's someone there with that financial astuity and acuity who can assist these students pro bono pro bono or if maybe there can be a way in which they can raise funds to maybe pay for your transportation maybe uh 
uh, sponsor your meal while you are here so that you can just use it as your CSI project in order to empower the students at this level. And you can actually use it as a platform also to build yourself and to build your platform, whether online or through your skills, by going to different campuses, different universities and empowering the students and starting it at a foundation level. Finances don't just start when a person actually earns. They need to start before that money comes in. We've seen when I blew it, we've seen on other platforms, people don't have mm. that, that um, money management prowess. Mm. Then you also have a project around uh, hunger, ending hunger on campuses. Yes. Yeah, yes. tell me about that. So that one, <clears throat> it's, uh, I, it will be not an easy thing, but we are going to achieve it. Yes. Because uh, remember to work on a certain land, it's something else. Yeah. We are going to try, there's a garden that side of the campus, mm. that uh, it's not uh, really big, mm. but the little we can, we can try. But mm. there's, uh, there's an idea that I had initially, mm. when I was uh, in, in community engagement, mm. they, I used to be in Bambanani project uh, mm. for, uh, for purposes of uh, goal number two of zero hunger. Mm. So we had a, also a garden that side. We were growing spinach, we were growing tomato, we were growing carrots, different types of uh, vegetables. Uh, vegetables yeah. Yes, because remember now we are having also a crisis to say on the campus they they bring us this SRC meal assistant, mm. right? but it has no nutritional balance. I can say like. Uh, the meal it's, uh, it's helpful, mm. but it has no nutritional balance. Mm. So we are going to engage also with the. They say when I was in the induction, there's a what is that? There's a board within the university. I just uh, forgot its name, but mm. it's going to assist us because they are good in terms of te uh, the technology and uh, which protects actually how the, the plants have to be taken care of. They did engineering. I was amazed mm. that how did the people who did engineering now participate in the farming project mm. and then they're running them very well because they grow these things these plants differently i was amazed how they were proposing their project mm. and there's also some non-profit organization mm. called Nkatuto. Mm. Yeah. Nkatuto. Yeah, Nkatuto. shout out Nkatuto. Nkatuto. Yes. so Nkatuto, it's uh, they focus on innovation also mm. so we are trying to also engage them to 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 to, to the to, to the to achieve that project of mm. the sd G, which is going to be actually a multidisciplinary uh, approach to it. We need different types of professions mm. to assist on how we can innovate, how we can improve our industries and such things, and mm. our technologies to particularly run the agriculture. Because the agriculture is one thing that we, we rely on to mm. ensure the food security. Mm. But on campus, uh, we are going to also, we can limit it based on to say, when we want to end hunger, let's let's build let's have small gardens mm. in our residences mm. we are going to marshal or mobilize the students toward that thing i've seen it it started by listed mm. yeah that side of the senior uh, houses of takalan also mm. i think they they've had the small garden mm. they, they planted uh, tomato they were even saying that no they're going to bring me uh, the peg of tomato <laughs> nice. okay, it's fine. And it's also in akanani mm. this they said they spotted the land, small and yeah, not too big, but mm. the little we can. Yeah. Because the investor, I doubt that is going to be able to say this big land yeah, is yeah, going to yeah. be given. Yeah. But through the community engagement, mm. I think that project of Bambana mm. is in your terrain. Mm. That uh, it's, a, it's an old grain. She also preferred me when I was there. I was like, mm. I like this initiative. Mm. I actually used to even, I had 165 hours for community engagement. Mm, nice. I always went there to participate in agricultural activities. We planned, we work every Saturday. Mm. I just took my time. Every Saturday, I used to say, wake up and go there. And mm. we wake up every Saturday, we go there as a community engagement. We wear our beeps, uh, we work. And the shares the greenhouse, I guess, uh, working the greenhouse. What is this thing? Greenhouse? Yeah, 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 I see that. Yeah, that yeah. So that they have those kind yeah. of things. Mm. So the the plants are protected mm. from these things of. But but we can yes. yeah, yeah, those yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. things. So we we need to do that thing, but how? The community engagement is a big sector. Mm. The big sector. That's where the most of the students are, 
and then should we then be able to establish or find each other on the basis of to say let's use that pambanani land to be able to have the 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 the, 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 the small small land that in that in that area of yeah. pambanani we plant and then we every saturday we we, we monitor it every saturday we monitor it and when we we, they, they, when we, we harvest, are, we harvest yeah. then we come we bring them they serve as the meal assistant oh. also as part of the meal assistant though they won't they won't cover everyone, everyone yeah but it, like it a, yeah. starts yeah it, so it, it starts there yeah? Yes, yeah. Yes, yes and also actually in starting there the beauty of it is that the more people seeing it work and actioning and implementing it on a small scale yeah. as you made the example of residences mm. where you can find the green patch on the roof yeah. of uh, some of the buildings that house then it can go beyond just the students yes, yes. and also them taking it back home to their respective mm. communities yes, yes. you know and building on it from that particular perspective mm. i want us to close but i also want us to have another discussion in the near future yes yes i want to speak about the issue of balance within education mm. you spoke about on saturdays you'd actually go to these npos mm. and everything else this is while you're studying yes. you know so you were segmenting your time between studying yes. and actually contributing back to society and Obviously, in some instances, people work on weekends in order to sustain yes, themselves yes. and pay for their education and so on. How do you or what strategy can you offer around balancing in education, balancing your books with being uh, a contributing member of the society. society, also SRC, yes. also these initiatives you are yes. coming with. And now you are here, I've stolen your time as well. Well, <laughs> that whole concoction, how do you create that balance? Uh, first thing for like, what I can say is that uh, I'm a hard worker. I'm a very committed person in what I'm doing. Mm. So I prioritize time because the most important thing for me is time. Mm. Yes, time management is one of the skills that I got from QA mm. when I was a tutor there. So they gave me the certificate for time skill mm. management. Because mm. the only thing that I prioritize is time. Mm. I cannot lie. <clears throat> there are certain things. I don't entertain, mm. which distracts what I have to be doing purposely to be like myself. the beautiful girls on campus. Ah uh, well, <laughs> no, ladies are not a problem. Yeah. but I don't get to explore oh, myself. Oh, my time. Uh, yes, I don't. <laughs> yes, I don't. I can say I don't entertain most of them mm. because uh, they destroy some of uh, the characters of leaders are yeah. destroyed by women mm. in particular. So myself going to explore and use time on to say perhaps i'm preoccupied in the state of being a chairperson and i can get any lady that mm. i would want mm. but i don't have time for that thing because me having multiple ladies that i'm being with makes that i must make time for such people yes. so then always i must balance within my studies mm. and there's ladies that i'm going around with mm. so there's no time mm. i just focus on my studies and then if there's something that needs my attention, mm. I make time for it. Mm. And then that's it. Mm. Yes, but uh, academically, uh, I'm fine because uh, I balance the time. Mm. I balance mm. the time. I make sure that if I have to be writing, I know when I'm writing, I have to study when. Mm. And then if during the day I'm on campus, mm. during the day, the whole day, I, mm. when am I going to go to class mm. and leave? one of my colleagues to best assist when i'm away mm. then when i come back i assist if that thing needed me mm. then but most of the time i can say during the day i become a student mm. who's on campus and then uh, i'll attend my classes i don't even miss a class of mm. course mm. but i still have more duties that maybe if one i missed class at some point when maybe there's a meeting mm. that helped me mm. but i will not be away maybe exploring myself doing mm. anything that doesn't contribute to my personal mm. that's myself mm. yeah no nice one yes so it was time management yes it was knowing having focus yeah. knowing exactly what it is yeah, you want to do yet. And when you have to do it, yeah, you're yeah, focused yet yeah, for sure. Yeah. Being hardworking and diligent yeah, yeah. is one of one of the key things as well. Being hardworking and diligent, and then segmenting your time in such a way of being able to prioritize and knowing mm -hmm. what's important, what's urgent, what's not important, mm -hmm. what's yes. not urgent, and then being and solar around, focused around, on around, that. Around, 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 around. And obviously also being forward thinking and yes, futuristic yes. because yeah. you know where you are headed mm. a, a parting shot can be there's politics 
Then there's the career which you are in, environmental yeah. health. Yeah. Uh, there's a old gentleman, the late Alfred Nzo, mm -hmm. who was an environmental health practitioner yeah. but ended up being a minister yes. in cabinet. He started off just like you. Yeah. Community engagement, people of LX, representing the people, but also understanding the dynamics around the health sector. Yeah, yes. But he ended up in politics yeah. and he, he didn't end up in health in politics, even though yeah. he was an EHP. Yeah. So I want to find out from you the role of politics and the role of environmental health, the course you are studying currently in terms of your future. Which direction are you more inclined to go in? Let's say looking at your life in 10, 15 yeah. years. <clears throat> okay, I, I can say um, my political affiliation is going to align with what I'm studying because mm. I believe that uh, the, my course is it's actually what seems to be done by the government mm. or it is what is actually happening. Part of service delivery, we need to make sure that as much as there are many people who are still vulnerable today mm. in terms of food, in terms of water they use, uh, I can say me in politics and my career will best assist me when I can preside over that strategic department mm. to best assist the political uh, party that I'm in. Because mm. remember, the EFF told us that there's no one who's going to ascend into being a minister mm. or a MMC or anything when they are not qualified mm. to do certain things. Because nice. <clears throat> the country today it suffers from uh, cadre deployment. Mm. Today the municipalities are not professionalized. Mm. The director you found that it's a person who went to Abbott mm. and has what, what not that they cannot do those things, but mm. it's very important that you put certain competence. People, yeah, competence, competence is very important. Yeah. So my politics and my career will best assist me that even if I can be in this particular department mm. with the information. Obvious, the EFF we are not suffering from political melgamonia. Mm. We don't want certain things. Anyone who's, in, who's going to be channeled within what they are, that they are actually qualified mm. for. I cannot say I'm going to be a minister of finance mm. or MMC of finance. Mm. I don't know when anything. When you're not that. even a CEO. Yeah, because <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to compromise the government mm. of mine. Because mm. it is going to be, I'm going to be a wasteful expenditure, mm. I can say. Mm. So um, politics and my career will best assist me when I become a person who's interested to say no now please assist the government this mm. way yeah mm, no i like that i like yeah. that hey guys and also yeah. again i can mm. say <clears throat> also to make sure that this profession of mine is acknowledged yes. i love it because it's very important we cannot do many things without it i can say because yes. the environment we live in an environment yeah. and the environmental health it's 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 focused on making sure that we we, we substantiate the section 24 mm. of the constitution mm. so me being in this field and being in politics i think uh, they are like they are like they are to be like this yeah, yeah. then i won't fail in what i mean yeah. yeah no young man yeah you are doing well buddy yeah. hey guys my mind is blown because when i was in heshari i was just book smart focused on the wuka and nothing else and i was honored to have individuals around me that would at least build this particular character in me so i see a bright future for this young man the name is terence lang i want you guys to remember the name is terence lang yeah. hey come back to this interview in 10 years time and you'll thank me later my starters i hope you've learned something it starts with you EFF for life. Yeah, EFF <laughs> for life. Yeah, in our lifetime, please register to vote and remember that next year we're going to national elections, which are going to be the ones that they are going to determine the socio political landscape of this country. We need to be the young ones that are participating in voting, making sure that we reclaim our country. They are making us to fight among ourselves. So we need the government that is going to exist for people. We need to take government from this constitutional delinquents in masquerading as the activists. Please uh, vote and register to vote only for the economic freedom fighter in their lifetime. Thank you very much. <laughs> ah, you killed.